Uh, today we are going to talk about very special theorem. Okay. Uh, we know how to manage this the integration. Okay. First one, if you have this type of integration around the circle z minus 1 equal to 2, this is a figure for z minus 1 equal to 2. It is a circle with radius 2 and center uh, 1 and 0. So this is a circle with radius 2 and center 1 and 0. If I check the, my denominator here, I will find I can factorize it into z minus i times z plus i. So the two roots of the denominator is i and minus i. I'm unlucky because both of them inside my contour here. So what I'm going to do? Yes, in the real integration, we used to have, when we have a factorization for our denominator, we can use a partial fraction. Yes, it is a partial fraction. So I can manage this one and multiply it by z, or I can manage it in, in one go. It is better to go for this one. One of it, you can factorize it like that one. And you can find in our easy way. Okay, to find A and B. So this integration will be transformed into two integration, right? Z square multiplied by the partial fraction of one over Z square. Okay. And you can go to use a simple pool formula which is 2 by i and your f of z is z square right so you substitute by i in your f of z so it will be minus 2 by i okay in the second part of the integration okay to do this one your pool is minus i so your f of z is still z squared, so you substitute by minus i squared, so you have uh, minus 1, and so you have minus 2 by. Just substitute here by these two values, and you will get the uh, result over here. Okay. This is how to manage using the partial fraction, right? And the integration is becoming uh, zero because this one is the uh, inverse sign of the previous one. Now, we have something called a residue theorem because we stuck in finding the first, the, the third integration over here. This one, if you remember, we tried to do it in the board and we stuck to have the factorization and using the partial fraction. Okay. So we have a residue theorem. This residue theorem, you have two cases to find the residue. Okay. The residue are you at your pool Z naught if it is simple. You just multiply by z minus z naught to get rid of the making the denominator zero. Okay? And remember, in this case, f of z is the whole thing inside the integration. Because this is a common mistake in our students. It's just for remember the Cauchy formula and remember the f of z is the numerator. No. In the residue theorem, f of z is the whole thing. Okay? This is the formula for the residue when you have a simple pool. If you don't have a simple pool, you have to use this formula. You just remember Z not have a power what? What is the power of this factorization? If it is uh, K, so you multiply by Z minus Z not to the power K for the whole thing inside the integration to get rid of the zeros of the denominator. Okay? And you have one over the factorial of K minus one. And you get the limit after you differentiate it k times if your pool was k order. Okay? 
this is a residue when you have a, a special case uh, like this one. Sometimes you cannot factorize, but you have you still have zeros for the numerator. So in this case, the residue formula is you differentiate only the denominator, right? And substitute by your pool. Okay? This is a very special case when you cannot factorize uh, your denominator. So the residue is just substituting after you differentiating because when you differentiate and you still have, you will not have zero anymore, right? What is the residue? The residue is the coefficient in the uh, expansion or the series of the complex function, right? The, it is called the Laurent series, like Maclaurin series in the real uh, function. Okay. Now, if you have f of z like this one, and you would like to have the residue at z, how many z here? You have z minus 1 square to multiply. This one is not simple because you have a square over here. And you multiply by z minus 1 square for f of z, and you differentiate 1 less than the power here. So if you have the power 2, you differentiate only once. If you have 3, you differentiate twice. And you divide it by the factorial of this one minus 1, right? This is how to find the residue if you don't have a simple pool. Okay, if you would like to integrate this one, you find the residue for the residue theorem telling you just multiply the sum of the residue by 2 by i. So it gives you the integration straight forward. Okay, let's back to our. Uh, Let's have one of this one. How to find the integration of this one, okay, inside the circle using the residue theorem. How many zeros I have down here? I have z equal to i and z equal to 0, okay, and z equal to 1 and minus 1. So, yes, this one I can manage it without the residue theorem. I can manage it with what? With the partial fraction. Okay, and we have done this one. If you would like to use the residue, go ahead for the residue, right? So all of them are zero, are simple pools. So the residue formula will be only the limit when z tends to zero after you get rid of what make the denominator zero, right? And the residue for one, you just get rid of what make the denominator zero, this one, okay? and substitute by z equal to 1. This is a residue. I have two residue here. The third residue, the fourth residue, because all of them inside. This is why I use a partial fraction. And here I use a residue theorem. The residue theorem, just 2 by i times the sum of the residues. OK? OK. Now, let's Back to our main question here. This is the one we cannot do the partial fraction. So we have to go for the residue here. The, our case here, I have to find, this is my zeros, z cubed minus one equal to zero. So I did factorize it because it's difficult to make partial fraction. So I, I have this zeros of this one, if you would like to factorize. So you can go for the partial fraction as well, but it will be it's not will be, it will not be easy. Okay. So you have double pool at z equal to one because it, you have the square here, right? So let's go for the residue. Yes. Which formula for the residue I'm going to go for? Yes, I go for this one. The formula I gave you for. Yes, this formula, when you have rational fraction and you have zeros here at your specific value, 
So you go for differentiating the, dif the, the denominator. Okay, so I'm just differentiating this one. How to differentiate this one? I'll just take it up and make it to the minus two. Okay, and get the minus two down and subtracting one. So it would be minus three. I get it back down here. Okay, so it will be to the power cube. Okay. And then I'm just substituting by the value of one. So I have the residue. Okay, now I would like you to, after the meter, uh, the first test, you just look for the application for the residues here. I will do it in the board, inshallah, just to make it easy for you. I think we have a mistake when we we have done this partial fraction. Let's just correct it. This one. No, we are lucky because we have only we have zero. Okay, let's go and try the second one. Can you tell me the question we have done by the partial fraction? Okay, let's go to write it down. Find the integration for z square. I think we have to manage this one with the partial fraction. Now I will go for systematic way. I'm just going for this one. This is x plus i y minus one equal to two, which is as I'm just do it in one go. X minus one square. Why I'm just wasting my time. Sorry. Okay. So it is a circle. In one and zero. And with radius 2, so I will go to, to the left, so I have minus 1, go 2 to the right, I will be to the 3, and go 2 up and 2 down, right? So I will have 2 here, minus 2 here. Now I just go for my circle, this is the first quadrant, sorry. And this is the second quadrant. Sorry. And this is the third quadrant. Okay, and this is the fourth quadrant. Okay, this is our circle. I will go for my denominator here, right? So I take the denominator here and have it equal to zero. Can you factorize this one? Yes, I can factorize this one in the complex number it's because I can write, I write it as z square minus i square. So I have z minus i and z plus i. If I put it equal to zero, so I will have z equal to i, it will be inside my c and z will equal to minus i still in my c. So what I can do with this one? Said so no problem, you have the partial fraction. So you can write z square over z square plus one like that one. z square one over z square plus one 
Yes, I can factorize. So I can z squared over 1 over z minus i times z plus i, right? Now I will have it as z squared over a z minus i plus b over z plus i. Now it is easy to have a and b, right? So I'm just hiding this one here and I put z equal to i. So a will equal to what? A will equal to 1 over 2i, right? Is it correct? Okay. So A equal 1 over 2i. What's B? B equal to, I'm just hiding this one. I was it equal to minus i, so it will be 1 over minus 2i. 2i is not accepted, so multiply by i, so you have minus 1 over half, and b will equal. Multiply by i, so I have minus, so it is half. So my integration will be coming what? 2 integration. Okay. z squared over... Oh, sorry, I'll just take my time z squared, open bracket, what's a? Minus i over 2, right? Minus i over 2 over z minus i, okay? Ma plus half over what? Yes z plus i. Half z plus i. All of this one multiplied by z squared dz. So I have two integration, right? I have minus i over 2. Okay, integration of z square over z minus i dz plus half integration of z square over z plus i, right, dz. Now I can use my Cauchy integration, so it will be minus i over 2. What's your f of z? This is your f of z here. Okay? So I have z squared and I substitute z equal to i. Multiply by 2 by i, right? And here you multiply by 2 by i. Two by i, f of z naught, and then plus half two by i and z square at z equal to minus i, right? So now what do you have? I times i give you minus, so you will have, and this two will be cancelled with this one, okay? So your end up with what? with by, when you substitute by i squared here, and this two would cancel this one, so plus by i, and you have minus i, uh, sorry, squared, i squared is minus one, i squared is minus one and minus, it will be plus, so you have by i here, okay, and you have minus by here, What's the mistake here? What a mistake. So what's the mistake here? 
think we, we, we have something missing. Yes, this is not half. This is I, sorry. It'll be I over 2 because we will multiply by I in both eyes. So we have I. So B has I here. This is a mistake. Okay. So this is I. So it is B. This is I. So you have minus. Okay. You have minus. So you have no I here. So you end up with what? With zero. This is the right solution for this question. Can you take a screenshot and put it in the chat, please? Because we have done a mistake when we have done the partial fraction before, right? You take z square outside and you just make a partial fraction for one over the denominator. Okay? Let's go for the residue, just to remember the formula for the residue. Did you take a screenshot? Yes, doctor. Okay. Now let's go for our question, this one. Well, we said we can do it by the partial fraction, which is so difficult for us, right? Okay. So how I can use the, the residue for uh, my case here? What is the formula for the residue before I start? If you have a residue for a simple pool, what does it mean, simple pool? It means you have f of z here, and you have z minus z naught to the power 1, right? This is what does it mean, simple pool. Okay? Multiple pool or non-simple let's say non-simple non-simple z no it means you have f of z here and you have z minus z naught to the power n right so or k if it, let's, let's make it k just to distinguish between this one and that so you have k here. So pool of order k. Tamam? So what is the formula? The main point is just to get rid of z minus z naught, right? So if you have the integration for f of z dz, okay, with symbol pool z naught inside c because if it's outside it will be analytic and the integration will be zero inside the so what you are going to do this integration will equal to 2 by i okay sum of the residue of the denominator right so if you have a simple pool you will go for this formula if you have one of them non-simple pool, you go for that one, right? Catch it. So, when you are going back to our in main integration, our integration was what? dz over z cubed minus 1 square. Okay. with C is absolute value Z minus 1 equal to 1, right? And we graph this one and we find uh, one of the root inside and one of them, uh, the both the other two outside. So when you just have this pool, this contour, so we have this circle here. with the center 1 and 0, and it is. So we have only one pool, which is z equal to 1 here, and the other two will be outside. So this integration will equal to 2 by i residue of f of z, f of 
our the residue for f of z at z equal to 1, right? So z equal to 1 is not a simple pool, right? z equal to 1 is not a simple pool. It is a multiple. Because when you factorize this one, we factorize it at z minus 1 times z squared minus z uh, plus z plus 1, right? So we are talking about this one. The roots of this one is outside here, okay? This other two roots is outside. So we are talking about z equal to 1. So which formula we are going to use? Yes, the non-simple. So what you are going to do, you just multiply this one by z minus 1 square. So you have this one square, this one square. Okay. Now, I'll go up here. My integration will be very, very simple to have the residue of f of z and z equal to 1, which is okay. It, so I have to have, it is of order what? Of order 2. So I have 1 over, I'm just I have the formula here. 1 over the 2 minus 1 d 2 minus 1 by dz 2 minus 1 for f of z. Okay. And after I finish just I have to multiply by limit when z tends to 1, right? And here 1 of 2 minus 1 factorial. This is will be the residue of f of z at z equal to 1, right? Okay? This is what happened over here just to save your time because the lecture is going to be finished. Okay. So, yes, I multiply by z minus 1 square just to get rid of z minus 1 from the denominator, just to not to have 0. So, I will left over with this one. I get the limit for z when z tends to 1 and I'm using the non-simple uh, pool formula. So when you have this limit, okay, you just substitute by z equal to 1, okay? So you get minus 2 over 9, okay? So the residue theorem is very important, okay? And when you stuck using the partial fraction, you have to go for the residue theorem. You have any question? And remember, this is uh, the three... A question we have we can manage all of this one and that one with the partial fraction but we couldn't manage this one by the partial fraction okay and also we have to remember we have a formula for the for the residue if z naught is simple it means z minus z naught to the power one if it is not simple, of order k, you have z minus z naught to the power k. So you have to multiply by z minus z naught to the power k to get rid of the zero of the denominator. And don't forget to have one over the order of the pool minus one factorial outside the limit after your differentiation. Okay? And there is another formula for the residue when you stuck to factorize so you can use the derivative of the denominator to get rid of the zero and this is very special case like the cotan cotan is not rational uh, as cotan but cotan is originally cosine over sine so i can consider cotan as a rational function so i can apply this residue formula thank you very much see you inshallah next lecture uh, tomorrow inshallah in the tutorial